This is extremely concerning, especially if you are a Cleveland Cavaliers fan like myself. It is currently being reported that Jarrett Allen could be getting a $100 million deal reportedly going to be over four years, which is about $25 million a season. This is all being reported by Terry Pluto. It is also being reported that the other alternative option could be a $100 million deal, but over five years, which would be $20 million a season. If Jarrett Allen takes either of these contracts, he will become the NBA's most overpaid player. And I'm not saying that as an exaggeration. If you're paying a player like Jarrett Allen $25 million a season, you are an outrageous basketball team. Now, we've seen that players like Andre Drummond ended up getting about $28 million a season. But that was when the NBA, it was not critically known if players like Andre Drummond were, you know, worth that. Were they going to be regressing? Were they the future of the NBA? Again, Andre Drummond still actually led his team to a playoff once with Blake Griffin, which a lot of people actually still forget. And for the most part, has had a pretty good career and actually did a lot of things to make that $28 million a, a year poor, uh, you know, for the, uh, the uh, Detroit Pistons. But if we look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, Jarrett Allen, he's playing in 2021. Teams now know you don't offer centers like that that much money unless you were trying to get them, you know, to leave their team. Like you're heavily trying to persuade them to potentially leave the team. The Cleveland Cavaliers are in a position to not offer that much amount of money for a guy that is currently averaging 12.8 points per game, 10 rebounds, 1.7 assists on 31% from three on 29.6 minutes per game. He has done nothing to prove that he is worth more than a $15 million per season player. And you're telling me that this guy might be getting a $25 million per season deal. Now, look, don't get me wrong. I love Jarrett Allen. I think that he could be a pretty good player in the league. And next season, I think he could average maybe 15 points per game on like 11 rebounds and be one of the best defensive centers in the league. If so, he would be worth his $15 million per season. But this guy still has consistent games where he will maybe score you five points and have eight rebounds and barely do anything and have that much of an impact on the game. He will still have like one at every three games, again, where he does absolutely nothing. The thing is though, he is just super inconsistent and about two of those three games will be a, you know pretty good. But the issue is you can't be paying a player 25 million who averages you 13 points per game. Now, let's look at some other players who are making less than $25 million. Victor Oladipo, who's reportedly going to be getting a $20 million or less deal, is averaging about 20 points per game on terrific defense. Julius Randle is on $19 million, and he is averaging 25 and 10 and 6 on great defense on 41% from 3. Now, let's compare Julius Randle's numbers to Jarrett Allen. Julius Randle is averaging double the points Jarrett Allen is, an extra 12 points per game, averaging the same rebounds. Maybe, I don't know who's the better defender. Julius Randle has been one of the best defenders in the league this season. He's averaging like five assists per game more than what Jarrett Allen is. And he's averaging 10% more from three than what Jarrett Allen is. And if Jarrett Allen was to accept a $25 million per season deal, Julius Randle would be making $6 million less than him. Either that says how underpaid Julius Randle is right now, or how overpaid Jarrett Allen will become if he does take this deal, and if the Cavs offer this deal. As a Cavs fan, I am praying this does not happen, because we have been in a bad contract situation for so long. We have had Kevin Love's ugly $30 million per season deal. We have had Tristan Thompson's ugly $18 million per season. We have had Andre Drummond's $28 million that he, you know, ended up making from the Cavs this season. The Cavs have been, 
you know, in the minus for a long time and haven't had any money to spend on some quality free agents, some good young free agents, until potentially this season, where they got rid of Tristan Thompson, they didn't re-sign him back, they traded away Dante Exum, who was on about 9 million, they have Torain Prince, who's on about 12 million, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just let him have a buyout, they're reportedly going to be trading Jetty Osman, who's on about 8 million, Kevin Love is reportedly finally going to be getting uh, either traded or bought out this season, who's on 30 million, the Cavs might have around $50 million if everything goes right to spend in free agency, and they'll still have players like Larry Nance, etc. With this money, the Cavaliers should be going out and signing Jarrett Allen back on about $15 million a season, should be lo looking to offer a really, really nice young player quite a bit of money. You know, players that are on the table, maybe like a John Collins type player, he would be cool to see on the Cavs. Um, and it would be really nice to see maybe the Cavs finally get some shooters on this team as well. And who knows, maybe potentially extend Colin Sexton. Who really knows? But if you offer Jarrett Allen $25 million a season, that's 50% of the money that you will have just freed up gone. And there's no way I cannot see a team offering Jarrett Allen $25 million a season. The only team I can see offering Jarrett Allen, like, real big money to get him over is maybe OKC, but they've got a really smart GM who would definitely not offer him $25 million a season, and I could see the Charlotte Hornets going big and offering him maybe $18 to $20 million a season. And look, if a team offers him $18 million a season, okay, I'm fine with him getting overpaid maybe a couple million. In my opinion, he's probably worth about $15 to $18 million. If you can get him on about $18 million a season, that's fine. But anything over that may be a bit over. Now, $20 million, oh, if, you, if there are teams offering him $20 million and you have to bring him back, as long as you can get some other players back in free agency, you know, maybe some good young players, I don't care. But $25 million a season, that rules basically all hope out to sign anyone at all. Now, I feel like, you know, there could be Larry Nance Jr. He's reportedly getting some offers as well. If you could trade Larry Nance Jr. and get a first-round pick back, I would do it. You free up another $11 million as well, which means you probably have about $60 million to spend if you get rid of, like, Jarrett Allen, Kevin Love, uh, Jetty Osman, etc. There is a, a lot and a lot to really look at this, and it's going to be extremely interesting to see how this goes. But I'm telling you guys right now, if the Cleveland Cavaliers sign Jarrett Allen on $25 million a season, even if he does manage to come out and average like 14 and 10 a night on great defense, he's still going to be overpaid. Another player I like to use as an example, who I think should be on similar money to Jarrett Allen, is of course Jonas Valanciunas, who is a much better player than Jarrett Allen right now. But I feel like Jarrett Allen has the power to potentially become a player you know, as good as a player like Valanciunas. But Valanciunas is getting $17 million a year, and he's averaging 17.1 points per game, 12.5 rebounds on 37% from three. There is no way Jarrett Allen is better than that guy, and you're telling me that he could be making an extra $8 million a season. There's no way. I, I refuse to believe it. The Cavaliers would be so dumb, and I'm telling you guys right now, if the Cleveland Cavaliers did this, they would regret it for years to come exactly like how they've regretted signing Kevin Love, how they regretted, you know, maybe giving Tristan Thompson a couple more years than what he was worth. Kobe Altman, the GM of the Cleveland Cavaliers, cannot make this mistake. He cannot make this mistake. He is heading into like his fourth year as the Cavs GM. This is the year he needs to go out in free agency and sign some young players, etc. Not offer a player like Jarrett Allen $25 million a year. But of course, I'd very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. What do you guys think about the Cleveland Cavaliers potentially uh, giving Jarrett Allen $25 million a year? Do you think it'll make him the most overpaid player in the NBA? Uh, do you guys think the Cavaliers should do it? You know, of course, I'd very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. But of course, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash long channels. And don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already. Links for them will all be in the description down below. But as I was saying, to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.